This video is going to show you how to use FTK Imager to create a forensic image. Now, I've already got set up a write blocker, which is connected into my computer, um, and the power cable goes into the um, power socket in the wall. Um, I have my USB device that I need to create a forensic image of in the write blocker body itself. So all I need to do now is to power on the um, device at the wall and then click the power button on the actual write blocker. I just need to wait for the computer to pick up the USB. Like you've just plugged it in to the actual computer itself. And there we go. So this has opened up a file explorer window um, for my USB device. The computer doesn't obviously know that it's actually in, plugged into a write blocker. Um, but you, it just thinks it's been plugged in as normal, which is the point of the write blocker. So this is the file on my USB device. Um, it's teslacat.jpg, so that's a, a graphic file. Um, so if I open it up, you'll see the photo of a cat. And there's nothing else on the drive. OK, so let's just close this window. Now I'm going to go down and open FTK Imager. And um, if it pops up with a little message saying, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Click yes. And then an FTK Imager will open up on your screen. Now we've got four panes on this screen, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Um, and you'll see in a second that we're going to use the top left pane mostly um, and the top right pane to click through the files. And then anything in the bottom right will be displayed. Um, hopefully either display the file or it will display the hexadecimal um, values for the file. Now we can do some triage on this first. That means we can have a look what's on the USB device before we actually image it to make sure it's got anything on there that we might want to see or if we want to see it before we see some other um, other forensic images. Um, so we can do that one of two ways. We can come to this file menu. Um, and we can click add evidence item or if i wanted to use the icons at the top i know that the first one is add evidence item so i can do it either from there or from the file menu um, i have an actual usb device so that is a physical drive something i can hold um, and i want to create a forensic image so at the moment i can only select that option because i don't have a forensic image but if i wanted to triage a forensic image i could also do that from this window or use a logical drive or view the contents folder i actually want to view the physical drive i have so i'm going to leave it on that option and i'm going to click next now this window is quite an important one you need to select the right drive um, the top physical drive zero in this window for me is my laptop hard drive that is not what i want to look at the one I want to look at is this USB device one at the bottom. Um, it may not always say that it's a USB device. This one actually does, so um, I can tell easily that's the one I want. Um, but it is worth knowing if you can see the files, um, actual size of the drives. But I know that my pen drive is not going to be a 512 gig um, solid state drive, but it's 131 megabytes according to this at the moment. Um, so I know that's the right one. So I'm going to click finish and basically that has just opened up my USB drive pretty much the same as it did in the file explorer window, but it just looks in a slightly different format. It's just showing me all the folder system and the folder structure rather than um, the actual just the folders like it does in um, Windows. So I've clicked on the root folder. So that's like the base main area on the pen drive where the Tesla cat bit was before. And as you can see, you've got the Tesla cat picture, if you click on that one, in the main bit of the root folder. Now, what wasn't showing up in File Explorer was this file here, am I here dot, dot x. Um, as if you can see that little icon there, it's a little word icon, where it's a dot, dot x, so it should be a word, um, word file. But it's got a red cross through it. So if you can just see, it's got a little red x through it that means it's a deleted file which is why it didn't show up in my um, 
file explorer window because obviously in windows it doesn't it thinks it's not there so this is triaging the actual drive i can see what's on it i can see the um system volume information gives me some actual information about the device itself and that also that there's some unallocated space that may have some other things on there or it may just be blank so that's what i've got on my device at the minute this i want to have a look at this further because it's got this deleted file on it and i want to know what that is so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove this from the evidence tree and now i've got nothing open so what i'm going to do now is i need to create an actual disk image of the usb drive so i'm going to go to the file menu and come down to create disk image and now it's asking me to select the source now as i just said i have a physical usb drive so i'm going to leave it on physical usb drive but obviously you could do any of the other options if you needed to for what we're doing we need a physical drive at the minute so i'm going to click next again it's asking me which drive do you want um this has now changed its mind and said it's 123 megabytes but that is still my usb drive um and i'm going to click finish it's not actually finished yet it's just come through to the next bit of the wizard so this is telling me right this is what i'm going to create a forensic image of this is where i need to add where i want to save it to um, so I'm going to click on the add button here and it's going to ask me what type of forensic image I want to create. Now, why I would usually use one of two options. I'd either use a raw or DD forensic image or I would use an E01 image. I'm not going to go through what these mean here. Um, that's in other parts of the course. Um, so those are the two options I would normally use. Uh, this occasion, I'm going to go with an E01 image because I want it to be a nice small file size because we've only got a small USB um, and I don't need to do much with it at the moment. So if I click next, I'm now going to label it with my case number and my evidence number. And I'm going to give it a unique description. So on my USB drive, it says St. Thomas. So I'm going to call it St. Thomas USB drive. Um, I'm the examiner. So I'm going to put my initials there. Um, I haven't got any notes to make it that at the moment, but I'm going to click next. Right, and now I need to tell it actually where physically I want to store this image. So that's going to be a place on my um, filing system and my hard drive. Now, if I was doing this on in the labs at uni, I would come down and I would find the D drive. Now, I don't have um, a second drive called the D drive. The D drive on this case is the actual pen drive I'm imaging. So I don't want it on there, but I would put it on the data drive at uni in the labs. Um, I've had to create a folder um, on my C drive um, and I'm calling it, uh, putting in my forensic image folder within my folder. That is so I know where it is. Um, and as I said, because I don't have a second hard drive in my machine, I'm just going to use um, a special area of my hard drive I've set up for it. So I'm saving it in my forensic images folder and I'm going to click OK. Right now I need to give it a name because it says St. Thomas on it. I'm going to call it St. Thomas. Right. The um, bits on this side, I'm going to leave as they are at the minute. These are the default values. So 1500, 6. And this one's not checked because I don't need a password on it. If I had a bigger hard drive, for example, this might come into account because it will basically that's how many. Um, that's the size of a of image file. It breaks it down into sections. So if I had a five gigabyte hard drive, it would be broken down into 1500 megabyte fragments. So it'd have an E01 file. And then an E02 file and an E03 file all the way down until it had separated that into smaller chunks. Um, because my pen drive is so small, it will only do it into one um, fragment size because it will be under that amount. Um, so I'm not going to change that. Um, and I want it just a standard compression, right? Six is sort of in the middle. It's a bit smaller than it is fast, but that's fine. So six is the default anyway. So I'm going to leave those numbers and not checked 
Um, but I have changed where I'm storing it and I have changed and uh, made sure I've put a file name. Now I'm going to click finish. Now this won't take too long, but I do want to make sure I see how long it's going to take by pre-calculating progress statistics. And I also want to create a directory of listings after um, the file's been imaged. So I'm going to make sure that's checked. And obviously I definitely want to check that the forensic image I create is the same as the USB device in the first place. So I'm going to make sure all three of these are checked, which they are. And then I'm going to press start. Now this isn't going to take that long. It's only a small pen drive, so it won't take long at all. It's literally seconds there. So this um, box that comes up basically tells you that the MD5 hash that it took to start with and stored matches the forensically imaged um, hash and same with the SHA1 value, they both match. Um, this hasn't found any bad blocks on my USB drive, so that's good. So I can close that one off and that's just shape the directory and it took 12 seconds for this image to create. So that's done. OK, so I've now created my uh, forensic image. So if I go back and add my evidence item, I now have an image file I can open to have a look at. So I'm going to open an image file and I'm going to click next and I'm going to find where I just saved that forensic image to. So this is in my Sarah folder in forensic images and I want the e one file, which is this one. The other two files under here, so there's three in total that the um, FTK imager has created for us. The top one is the actual forensic image file. The second one down is a, a CSV file, so comma separated value file, um, with the contents of the forensic image in it. And the bottom file is the TXT file that's got the details about the imaging process. So if I open the bottom one, um, I would get basically the same as the um, verified checklist at the end of the process. If I opened uh, the CSV one, I'd get, an, at this instance, I've got Excel on my computer, so I'd open it Excel, and it would show me the contents of the forensic image in Excel. Um, when we're opening it in FTK Imager, I need to open the E01 file, um, because that shows me the actual forensic evidence. So if I open that, and then click Finish, it will pop it up in here just as it did before. However, uh, this time it tells me the name of the image, but the rest of it is basically the same. It's got the files in it, the same as it did had before, the mihere.doc and the testlocker.cat JPEG. So you can still see them the same as you did in hex or the actual image, the picture. Uh, and that is basically how you use FTK Imager. There are a few other things you can do in this, but for the moment, that is all we needed to show you um, how to use it. OK, so I can close that off. Um, I can show you that my actual file, um, they are here. So this is my E01 file. Now, don't ever try and open an E01 file from here. Um, open it either through Autopsy or if you're using FTK or FTK Imager or NCASE if you're using that or some other program. But if you open it through here, Windows won't know what sort of program it is and it will just be easier to open it through the program itself. Um, CSV file will look like this. So it will tell you the name of the file, the folder, where it is on the actual USB drive, the size of it, and then modified, created and access date and if it's deleted. Now this one here says it's deleted if you come across. It's your I, uh, I am I here dot docx file um, that has been deleted, but all the others are still on there. So that's what's in this one. Um, and I don't want to change it. And then the bottom one is our text document. And this just shows us exactly the same as the um, verification messages in a slightly different format. But if you look up here, you've got the MD5 checksum and SHA1 checksum. And then in image verification results, you've got them both there that have been verified at the end. It says verified instead of matched, but it's the same thing. So 
you've got some information about the drive there as well. So you do some CHS maths if you wanted to on that one. And at the very top, it tells you who's imaged it using what software. So this tells me it's acquired using Access Data Imager, which is what it's known as. Access Data is the company that make it. And then it's FTK Imager, but they've shortened it to Access Data Imager. And it's version 4.2.1.4. I put the case number in um, and the evidence number and the unique description, obviously, as I said, St. Thomas USB drive and then my initials as examiner. So this will tell you who's done the examining on that file. Um, and then obviously where it's stored or create where actually before you move it anywhere, this is where it's actually physically created it to. So if I went and moved it, obviously that wouldn't be right after I've moved it, but it's, it was right when I moved it, um, saved it in the first place. And then you've got the rest of the information about the drive. Okay. So if I'm now finished with this USB drive, what I have to do is I have to take the USB drive and eject it like I normally would. And then when that's message popped up, I can push and hold the right blocker to turn it off. It's turned off and then I need to turn it off at the wall. 